scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, this time talking about Tom Baker, Series 4, Number 7, The Fate of Krellos. Now, recently, Tom Baker was at an event, and he was talking about how his recording basically banked up countless more episodes, so that, and in these are in his own words, when he dies, there'll still be more Doctor Who coming your way for years to come. It's a bit of a sobering thought, really. I suppose when you reach a certain age, in my case it was what? 20, you start giving in to time. I was a very morbid person in my 20s. Anyway, this is the fate of Krellos. The fate of Krellos is an odd creature because you know how I always bang on about how I really want these Tom Baker stories to be longer, to be the equivalent of two-disc stories, and I get all excited when we get things like the Philip Hinchcliffe box sets. Well, yeah, that's what we've got here. And next month, August we'll have part two of this story, and it'll all add up and it'll be absolutely fantastic. Except that's next month. At the moment, we've just got parts one and two, being the fate of Krellos. Now I know they've done this before, and they'll do it again a thousand times, hopefully. But basically, this July 2015, we've got one story that is basically a massive setup for the next story. But how does this setup work? Well, if you listen to the extras, it all gets a bit explained, and then you start going, yeah, I can completely see why this story is the way it is. But just because you know the story is the way it is, and you know that the story is continued next month, means that in your head, it's going to be better than it is when you're listening to it. Here's the premise, rather than the synopsis, which I'll read in a moment. The premise is, imagine what happens on those adventures where the Doctor turns up on a planet and just has an ordinary day. They're just going to visit something. They're going to have a look at some landmark or some scenery. The sort of thing people do on, say, a Sunday. Now, usually in these Doctor Who stories, something terrible and monumental happens. The Doctor has to get involved, and so on and so forth. Well, for most of this story, that's just not the case. Canine's been given basically the afternoon off to mess with the TARDIS and do as he pleases. He's ended up reconfiguring the TARDIS that's the console room, into that of the second Doctor. The switches are all in the wrong place. The roundels look different. Everything seems more colourless. A dig at the black and white era, perhaps. Or perhaps not. Nobody mentions that it's a particularly odd shade of green in order to appear white on camera. So in this story, they're off to visit a mountain, and they'll come across someone on a mountain. Of course, there's the incredibly scary opening, the pre-title sequence that suggests so much more than we actually get in this story. And then very quickly, very, very quickly, the whole story ramps up and becomes something very, very ominous and almost, well, Sutek-like in its explanations. Sutek's not in this, by the way. As there's a giant Cyberman on the front of next month's story, you can kind of guess where this is going. So without knowing that there's going to be a Cyberman coming along, and without knowing that this is an experiment in narrative on the behalf of Nick Briggs. When you're listening to it, you're going, are we getting there? Are we going somewhere? I know this is only one disc long. Oh, we're running out of time. Come on, move things along. And what's actually happening is some fantastic performances, some actual character pieces, some work from the Doctor, some of the training that the Doctor is giving Leela. It all comes together remarkably well. And the only reason that you're left feeling disappointed is because you have to wait a month for part two. Well, that's the sort of disappointment I can definitely live with. It's a fantastic little tale, and something that I'm very excited, and as a taster for part two, I'm very excited, but as a standalone, no. So rather than read the synopsis, what I'll do is let you hear the trailer, and speak to you all very soon about more Doctor Who. Be seeing you. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, The Fourth Doctor Adventures, Doctor Who, The Fate of Krellos. 
Hang on. The control room. The light, the colour, the smell. It is different. Help, killing, ding. Help, killing, ding. Help, Hey, now, what are you doing? Ding. What are you calculating? Help, killing, ding. You are! I can't! Ah! Uh, hello, hello. I'm the doctor. This is Leela. You seem to be in a spot of trouble. Uh, you could say that, uh, doctor. It is a city. A city built by Tesh. Certainly technological, yes. Really, rather beautiful, don't you think? And with approval ratings now sky high. The mayor of Krillos City has been soaking up the adulation when she announced the completion of the final section of planet-wide connectivity. Look, Doctor, that beautiful city, destroyed. Yes, torn out, ripped apart, utterly destroyed. Master, Master, danger! K-9, what is the matter? Yes, what is it? What was that? Let's not stop to find out. It is the end of all that we love. A world torn out, ripped apart. Big finish. We love stories. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast, available on RSS, iTunes, Stitcher, Audio Boom, and Tumblr. Doctor Who and its associated works are copyright of the BBC. No infringement is intended. You can contact the show, donate, buy merchandise, or find out more about my other projects by visiting the Tin Dog Podcast homepage and clicking on the links. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. On the 5th of September 2015, Hooverville will return. The biggest little Doctor Who convention in the whole of the UK is proud to present several fantastic guests. First off is the Colin Baker, a man who needs absolutely no introduction. Guests also include the author Jenny Colgan, responsible for Dark Horizons and Time Trips, Richard Marson, the man behind JNT, The Life and Scandalous Times, and the brand new book, Drama and Delight, the biography of Verity Lambert, Dan Starkey, the man behind the mask when it comes to Commander Strax, and of course, Ian the Elf in the Christmas special, Terence Dix, one of the men behind The Third Doctor, and more target novelizations than you can shake a stick at, the actor David Benson, from Robot of Sherwood, Iris Wildheim, and the Scarifiers. Matthew Waterhouse. Yes, Adric. Michael Pickwood, the current production manager on Doctor Who. And Karen Louise Hollis, author of The Man Behind the Master, the biography of Anthony Inley. More guests may be added, but either way, that's a fantastic lineup. Visit the Derby Quad website on www.darbyquad.com dot co dot uk and follow the links saturday the 5th of september 2015 see you there Tonight, uh,